Alrighty guys, so talking about what I like about this gun now. I don't have uh, unfortunately I can't um, take any credit for any of this gun setup. Um, I kind of went to it and, and fell in love with that. I shot the IMM style gun um, forever. But this right here, this weighs less than this. This is something special. So we this is a stroke gun. Um, and one thing that's nice about stroking a gun is you can actually customize what you like about it. A lot of people like uh, a stroke gun, especially with iron sights and, and major 40, because they can make the gun softer. But the reciprocating mass, when you actually make that mass move longer, it takes longer to settle. So for a lot of guys, they, they don't shoot fast enough to really notice that. Well, we can actually take an aluminum shock buff, and somebody that wants to be on that end of the spectrum, that's fine. And then somebody on my end of the spectrum that I want the gun to settle as fast as possible and stop all the movement as fast as possible, I destroke it. So this is a 400 aluminum shock buff that destrokes this gun about like what I was used to running with a shock buff on the, the Infinity. But again, going back to the barrel, tungsten barrel here. So this barrel weighs more than the weight of the slide. So when the slide closes, it really softens that blow. They take a lot of the weight out of the uh, slide to actually get it to fit because it's such a big bull barrel. 750, 750. So a lot of the weight's taken out here. So then machine it all the way back, all the way to here. So that's what's the real key and where the magic starts happening on this. You don't lose any integrity of the slide um, as far as, you know, when you actually do an island barrel, this becomes uh, almost a spring up front here. And after a few thousand rounds, it will actually open up. It does settle, don't get me wrong, it does settle. Um, but the, the gun changes how it locks up and unlocks, um, especially with a comp gun, uh, with that comp pushing down as the side's trying to unlock. And there's obviously a space, an island cut there where it's pushing and pulling it apart. So I find that uh, this gun is a little bit nicer as you uh, progress through the first 15, 20,000 rounds of your gun. The gun stays the same. It doesn't change as far as how much you have to sight it in and, and this and that. The characteristics of the gun are very, very identical throughout all of it. Now, the stroke of this gun, like I was telling you before, is something that's cool because they allow you at Akai with, with, with that stroking system to customize whatever you want on that gun. We'll get to that a little bit further down the road as far as numbers and checking it. But this is also a full-length dust cover. And I was very skeptical at this at first um, when I went to it. But what this does, um, it's, it's not about the weight. I mean, the weight helps to have it out front, especially counterbalancing it to keep good balance with the, you can see it stands up by itself with the magwell. So the weight is actually distributed really good. But what this does, the barrel never fully sets down on the slide. So when the gun unlocks, the barrel doesn't move as far down. It actually rests. You can see parts right here where it rests on the, uh, the, uh, the frame. So it rests, so it, it doesn't have to go as far up when it locks up, and it doesn't drop all the way down when it unlocks, so it stops the movement a little bit more. This is a titanium comp, and what makes it more effective is actually how fast the gun locks up and unlocks. It, it's, it's, not about, it's not about actually getting the gun, the, the barrel heavy uh, altogether. It's about having the barrel heavy in the right spots. So if you get that weight far out in front of the muzzle, the further out it goes, the worse it gets. So with the sleeve, it gets it quite a bit further back. So it's a, it was a really hard process, I was told when they were actually coming up with this um, and, and fine-tuning it, but they've really gotten it down because I, I can't imagine it getting much better than what it is now. But the rib, I mean, you can't even see hardly where it starts here. It goes all over here, and there's a little bit of a rib where they thread it and then uh, threaded the uh, tungsten on uh, to the, the barrel. Uh, but... How it sits on the frame is important. I think that's that's a nice feature. I really, really like it. This comp is awesome too. It's essentially a two-chamber comp. It's uh, its first chamber is all about essentially being a brake, but yes, it does have some thrust of gas that it's pushing up forward, and the last one's all about brake as well. I like it. I, I think that we can definitely improve more on the comps out there for the majority, but this combination with the ported barrel is amazing. So they start off with... V ports, and I don't know off the top of my head what size V ports these are, so we're going to find out. There, it looks like they're one, I think they're actually 110. Let's see here. 
So it looks like 110. And they are, as far as being far apart, they are 130 apart. So 110 holes, 130 apart. Now, after the V, and the V, what it really does for you, it helps settle the gun. It, it neutralizes and makes the gun more predictable. There's not a better tracking gun that I've ever shot that's this flat than this V-port um, and uh, comp combo. The three vertical ports here are one, 178, I believe, 179, and they are 165 apart. So 165 apart and 179 holes. Let's see here, maybe they're 180. One, 180. Yeah, 180 holes. 180, 183, if I get on there. Uh, should have cleaned it a little bit more. I think they're 180 is what they're meant to be. But this combination works great. So this is actually kind of the magic of what they're doing here. It's a lot of time. This this right here is the amount of work put in just this one barrel is what most gunsmiths put into, you know, just building a gun. But that is the magic of it. So let's start putting this bad boy together. So go ahead and put the firing pin back in there. EGW, another firing pin. One of the things I really like um, now since I have all these parts to my uh, ability to um, use versus just one manufacturer is learn as far as what's out there now. And uh, EGW is killing on the parts stuff. They, they really do some great hammers and sears. They do some great uh, filling products as far as everything that they, they are doing, the, the front sights that, that, they're, that they're doing are, are awesome, and the prices you can't beat them. I'll throw out some uh, extant labs there. This, this oil was awesome. They're out of North Carolina, as I, as I am as well. But what, make, what really separates this oil apart from the rest is actually just how well it keeps the gun from building up carbon, especially when you're shooting open and you're shooting uh, coated bullets. It's very important. So the bullets I shoot are 125 truncated 356 blue bullets. And uh, accuracy is just stupid as far as how uh, how they've actually met my expectations and, and even exceeded my expectations. So we're going to get into uh, you putting this recoil system together here. I'm running an ISMI 7 pound. We do have to cut coals. So what you're trying to do, which you don't want to happen, when, when I push the reverse plug all the way back, it needs to bottom out on the, the guide rod or the, um, the shock buff like it, like it is here. If it's like this, you're going to have recoil bond, and that's not good. There's a lot of guys in my local area that had gotten new guns and wouldn't work just and uh, had a horrible time just because of that one little issue right there. So pay attention. All right, so this is going to be the key though, guys. So the cycle of the gun is from here, just a little bit in front of it slightly, okay? All the way to there. That's the cycle of the gun. So this gun cycle rate, essentially, if you if you will, push it flat, it's about 208, say 209, okay? 209. So that's the cycle rate. I think anything that's going to be uh, closer to two, the better off it is. Now, we could have made this, you know, um, a 500 shot buff, and we could have actually gotten that, that, uh, that, that two there, but I didn't know. I knew this was going to work, but I think a two-inch is about perfect for reliability and performance. So a two-inch cycle rate. That's what I'm looking for. So on the frame and trigger and such like that, using a PT Crip here, one of the autocorrect um, stainless steel mag wells from Akai, um, Dawson Precision Mag Catch Button. This thing's not been holding up very good. This is my third one. They break pretty often. I think I'm going to go to STI. I'm not about fancy triggers or fancy parts. I just need them to last. You see this PT's all chopped up. I had a lot of trouble um, breaking them. My, my go-to um, thumb safety right now is actually a double tap. I've got one I need to put in and I've just been lazy. Um, on my mainspring of my EGW firing group here, my mainspring I'm running is an ISMI. It's a uh, 15, straight 15 right now. I'm actually really liking it. 
I've had a lot of horror stories not setting stuff off, but with this trigger group, I don't have one issue. I mean, I've even let my primers out until I thought that they were just ridiculously not seated and it still set them off. So I'm not sure why I'm getting success off that and other people aren't. But EGW extended firing pin, EGW firing system with a 15 pound ISMI mainspring. So uh, everything on that's working great for me. Um, I'm going to clean up this a little bit. I shot a little bit yesterday, but mainly I had to work it out the range to set up some uh, moving targets for this match this weekend. So give me one second here. just want to get a little bit of this junk out of here. And put a little bit of this awesome Eco CLP lube on from Extent Labs. Alright. So this is also, uh, talk a little bit uh, about my setup. Because a lot, of, a lot of people, you know, I was the first person to win the Nationals and um, a, a significant match for our sport with a, a RTS2 and I went away from the RTS2 and now I'm running a whole of sun and uh, this is actually a green dot uh, shout out to Aaron Eddins on getting me to try the green dot it's pretty nice there's a lot of things I'm liking but I'm still torn if I'm going to use it or not in uh, any big matches uh, shot Canadian Nationals with it and it worked pretty good and uh, we'll see how that goes but so a whole of sun 510C I took the shroud off of to get the weight off that's my only gripe about it actually stay sighted in stay zone it's just, it's, it's a little heavy. A TiVo mount. I like the TiVo mount. I keep breaking these um, blast shields because actually of, you know, my shorty gun with, with those V ports even, um, just beating it up. So we need to come up with a solution for that to be a little bit stronger. It kind of makes a, um, a nice mount as well. It's a double side. I'm pretty much a single mount guy. I like actually how the, how it flexes and returns better on a single mount than a, than a double mount. I did not know I liked that. I kind of caught that uh, by accident when I was running those uh, RTS twos at the beginning and started running them way far back. All right, let's get a little bit more on here. So, get it all back together here. This is just a field strip. We're not taking the the hammer and sear and all that good stuff out today. All righty. Like to put a little bit of drop oil on the slide stop as well for the foot of the barrel. And as far as something I don't think I could go back from now, that's freaking awesome, is the uh, removable slide racker. This thing is awesome. This works off of two ball bearings, two detents on the slide. Just push it in, it catches, and just pull it right back out. There's nothing, nothing harder or easier to worry about on that. I've never had one come off. Um, I've had over 50,000 rounds now through this design. Never had an issue, and I know guys have been shooting for years now with that, you know, hundreds of thousand rounds, never had an issue with it. So that's my gun. Um, I love the way that it shoots. It looks good to me, but I don't care about looks. I'm more about actually how the gun shoots. I don't, if it's the ugliest gun in the world and it shoots the best, that's fine. I'll, I'll still accept it. This gun is a little heavy. This Magwell, I've been playing around with it. I think we're going to go to a lighter one. This gun is, uh, I think the best, go to there first, the best Weight is probably somewhere around 55 to 58 ounces um, for a gun. I think this gun is a little heavy, but it's very balanced. Well, if you actually uh, see where it's balanced, it's right at the trigger here. Um, it's 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 pretty awesome. It's it's pretty impressive on on how heavy it is for the uh, the the weight balance it has. But this gun weighs 63 ounces uh, with this magwell. So if I put an aluminum one on there, it actually gets to that that 58 ounces, which is uh, pretty awesome. I really like it. I like, I like my triggers um, running right at 20 ounces is what I run it. I run a 20 ounce break and I run a, uh, a 10 ounce um, pre-travel. And I don't run a lot of uh, a, a short reset. I, I'd rather my trigger be reliable instead of have a, a lot of reset. But flat trigger, curved trigger, I really don't think it matters. Um, I, as long as I can be behind the gun and pull the trigger straight back, that's all that I care about. One thing I do like about a curved trigger, you get a little bit more surface area on your trigger with your finger, and it does make the gun, uh, the trigger feel lighter without it actually being lighter. Flat, you get more pinpoint precise of where the pressure's at, but it does make the trigger feel a little heavier. But anyway, that's my gun set. That's what I like. That's what's special about this gun. Go check them out at acguns.com, and I hope that, uh, hope that helped you. Have a good one.